Welcome everybody to the latest Tilt webinar with Rachel Smith. It's the um, June the 30th today and we're very much looking forward to hearing Rachel talking about the use of Apple apps um, for blended learning. Rachel is a, a languages teacher working on the Isle of Man. She's also an Apple dis Distinguished Educator and uh, she knows lots and lots of things about um, uh, iPads and iOS devices and Macs and she's going to be telling us uh, some of uh, based on her experience some of the things she's been doing around remote teaching uh, in the languages classroom in recent weeks. So everyone is very welcome and it's fantastic that you can all be here. Um, so Rachel is, is uh, currently on the Isle of Man. Uh, she's working in uh, St Ninian's High School. Uh, you can see she's taught languages for 23 years in a wide variety of settings both in the UK and on the island and she's also an Apple professional learning uh, specialist as well. So um, you can see this is what the session is all, over, all about, but I think at this point what we need to do is crack on with Rachel. So I will stop sharing my screen and Rachel, if you'd like to share your screen, we can hear from you, but we're absolutely delighted that you can come along this evening and tell us all about Apple apps for blended learning. Over to you, Rachel. All right, let me just... Um, if you click on share computer sound, if you remember. I have done, I think. Perfect. So Rachel's using the AirPlay option, which means she can share her screen. And over to you, Rachel. There we go. Can you, can you see all that, Joe? Yeah, all good. All good. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much um, to ALL London for inviting me to do uh, this webinar today. Um, I'm delighted to be with you all. <clears throat> And I'm not the only person in this webinar from the Isle of Man, so um, my head of department's also in the webinar, so hi Sylvie, special hello to you. Um, we are going to have a look at some Apple apps for blended learning. It's really important for you to know that actually, we, neither myself obviously and Sylvie don't work at a one-to-one -one, um, iPad school, we just have carts of iPads. Um, and so even if you only have one iPad, hopefully you'll find some top tips and tricks to be able to use your iPad really successfully um, and share things with your students. Um, so at my school, we use Google Classroom. Um, and when we were in lockdown, because lockdown has finished on the Isle of Man, we're back in school. This is our third week back in school. We've known more social distancing. It's really rather fabulous. Um, I used my iPad a lot to, to create materials for my students. And I'm just going to share some of those things with you today. So let's make a start. Um, as I was preparing for this uh, webinar, I came across this really rather cool quote. Um, and I think it sort of sums up what we've really been about during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, we, we couldn't cut down the jungles because that was probably the virus itself. Um, and our, our students were in, um, in a drought in, in the sense that they weren't being taught properly. And, and lots of you, um, in fact, all of us really switched super quickly to uh, to online learning um, and we're really successful with it and I think that's a um, testament to to you all for, for being able to switch so so super fast over to that and, and actually the things that we've learned during the COVID-19 crisis will probably stay with us which is why um, I'm talking about blended learning right now. So in this session what we're going to look at we're going to look at a, a few things we're going to look at keynotes and we're going to look at the the camera, which actually is one of the most important apps on an iPad. We're going to look at clips, we're going to look at numbers, and we are going to look at screen record. Um, and the first thing we are going to start with is we're going to start with Keynote, which I actually think is the king of all iWork apps. And um, everybody thinks it's just like a, a presentation app, but it's so much more than that. Um, and hopefully by the end of it, you will, you will, um, oops, you will agree. It's just managed to flick itself forward a bit. Lovely. Um, my iPad's off at an angle, so when I'm, I have to kind of look at it, so apologies if I'm not looking at the camera. Right, the first thing we're going to look at is, we're going to start dead simple, we're going to look at icons. Hmm. Okay, I thought you couldn't see my screen. Um, and in order to actually work, I have to have the, um, the keynote in non-play mode, uh, so just bear with me. Right, icons. In Keynote, and actually in all the iWork apps, there are lots of a big icon library that you can use. Um, so the way to get to the icon library is in the top right hand corner, uh, there's um, <coughs> excuse me, an add button, you tap on that, and you go to the circle and the square. 
and you'll see that they're well, basically just basic squares come up. Um, now, these are super cool because I love these and I use them loads because you can type directly into them. You don't need to add a text box. You just type straight into the shape. So they're really useful. And um, obviously you can change the color of them. Um, so you, when you want to edit something in iWorks, you need to have blue dots around it. So tap it so you've got a blue dot around it. Go up to the paintbrush, go to style and to fill. And we can pick a color. Let's go purple. And you can easily change it. If you want to change the size of your um, font, blue dots around the outside side, paintbrush, text, and increase the text size. So the, the basic shapes are dead useful. But also you'll see, if I just scroll through at the top here, there's lots of categories. And let's just go into nature. And you'll see that there are loads of icons that you can use. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pull this tree into here. Now, of course, with a tree, we can make it, well, green, of course. But that isn't very tree-like. So you can still play more. If you go to fill and you go to gradient and you start the top of your tree green and you have the end colour as brown, you end up with something that's a little bit more tree-like. Um, you can also, you can only use on the iPad actually. I'm just going to, let me just show you, sorry, I've jumped. I do this all the time. I think everybody knows everything and then and I jump ahead. You can search the um, icon library. So in the search bar where the little magnifying glass is, you just tap in there. I'm just going to search coffee. I'm going to bring up this coffee mug. I'm going to make it quite big. And in the um, iPad app, you can actually break apart some shapes. Not all shapes will break apart and you can recolor different elements of it. So if I go to the Paint. So I've got my blue dots around, I go to the paintbrush and I go to arrange and um, I have the option to break apart and you can then colour, let's go to fill, you can then colour each element a different colour and you can make it look a little bit more like your oops, Costa coffee mug. And then we now they're three separate shapes, so we need to join them together again. So you tap and hold, tap one thing and hold your finger on it, and tap, oops, sorry, and then tap the next thing. My iPad's not going to play. The next thing. Can you see they've all got blue lines around? When I let go, I get the option to group, and now I have my coffee cup. So um, that's, that's icons really, um, and you can use icons for all kinds of stimulus. So of course, loads of us use, <coughs> excuse me, loads of us use icons um, to help uh, children learn different bits of vocabulary. Um, what you can do is you can, you can build pictures to, for students to describe. So you can use all the icons and you can build pictures for, um, for students to describe. So I'm just gonna build a picture for you so you get the, the basic idea. So I'm just gonna take away that title. Um, and then with nothing highlighted on the screen, I'm going to press, press the paintbrush. I'm going to go to background and gradient. I'm going to have a blue sky and I'm going to have a yellow bottom. Okay, and now I'm just going to use <coughs> the built-in elements that are in Keynote. You will soon realise that copy and paste is your friend. So this is my C. Um, Rachel, while you're doing that, we've had a great question. I'm not sure the answer to this, actually, which is if you export the keynote as a PowerPoint, does it keep all the animations that you do? No, I don't think it does. No, okay. I thought no, it did, but I wasn't export. sure. Yeah, okay. You have to export it as a, um, a movie. Uh, and then you could pop that into your PowerPoint. Does that make sense? Yeah, you could, but if you export it as a PowerPoint, which you can do, the animations yeah. will, so the images will be there, but the animations will not be there, like Magic Movie, no, for don't. example. No, don't think so. Okay, so yeah, so you could export as a movie, you could export as a GIF as well, put that into a PowerPoint, but you can't export the uh, keynote as a, as a PowerPoint and keep all the animations, that's great, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not certain, but I think not. Okay, cool, thank yeah. you. Maybe it's something for me to play with later. Um, okay, so I've copied and pasted my things. Um, and actually what I'm going to do, because I don't want my C to move, is I'm going to just remember how I highlighted them all. I'm going to press my paintbrush. 
I'm going to go to arrange and then I'm going to go to lock so that they don't move now on my picture. I'll just keep going. I'm going to add a boat. Um, I'm going to add obviously the sunshine. Oops. And you can keep on building and building. And the idea being that um, you will, let's put a surfboard in there, you will give your students lots of stimulus so that they can actually speak or write about something. Um, so here's my ice cream, I'm actually gonna break this apart. Um, and they can use your pictures to help them write, in this case, about their holiday. I hope you're getting the idea. Ooh. Mint chop chip, anyone? Okay, put myself an ice cream. Oops, it's flipped itself around, that's not a problem. Um, now I'm just gonna pop a, a sun umbrella in here. Let's change it to pink. Now, when you want to rotate something on an iPad, you hold your finger on the shape and you move your thing, the other finger of the other hand around so that it rotates. It won't do it for me now, will it? Typical. Oops, I'll move into a different space. Mm -hmm. Typical, won't do it. Mm. Yes, well, believe me when I tell you that it does. Oh, Joe. Anyway, it'll have to be a straight up and down one, but generally, you've put your finger on and you move it left to right and it should move for you, but I think it's struggling today. So there you go. You've made yourself a picture, and what you can do is you can export that as an image, and then you can put that image somewhere else, like Google Classroom. I'm just going to show you how to export as an image. So on my screen, if you see in the top right-hand corner, <coughs> excuse me there's three dots um, and we just go to export and you go to images okay you can see on the left hand side that this is slide number six so we don't want to export all of the keynotes we just want to export slide six so here where it says all if you tap there um, oops slide six so from slide six to slide six back to image options we're going to send it out as a, a JPEG. I'm going to save my image. And then when I go to, there it is. Okay, so that's in my, that's in my camera roll now and I can use it however I want to use it. But really quick, simple way of produ producing some sort of stimulus for your, for your students in whatever way you want to use it. Okay, the next thing then, um, in Keynote numbers and pages, you can record. Um, if you are not a one-to-one -one school like me, um, generally I use this for me to record and then send the recordings to the students. But of course, if you are a one-to-one -one school, then of course the students can do recordings and send them to you. So um, I'll just show you how to add a recording. Um, we've used some icons again to, to um, make a stimulus. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how to record. So you go to the add button and you this time, not in the shapes menu, but in this menu on the end that looks like two photographs, one on top of the other, if you tap record audio, you'll see that everything shifts up a little bit and uh, the word record comes at the bottom. So I'm going to press record and speak. Uh, à cette heure, je me lève. Okay, uh, so that's my recording done. And on the right hand side at the bottom, you see I've got an edit button. So if I press edit. I can actually trim this recording. Um, so I let it run a little bit at the end. And if I just pull this to there and I press trim, then it trims the whole thing down. I can preview it, I can delete it, but actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert it like so. Okay. Um, we were talking about icons and I said the library was quite big. Um, it is, but it doesn't have everything. And so sometimes you can encourage your children, your students, to use their imagination and see if they can make icons. Um, and I'm going to do that now for you. We're going to make a shower. You're going to be amazed at how we make a shower out of icons. So we're going to go to add. I'm going to go back into that shape but menu and I'm going to go for a stick. Actually, that will do me. 
And the other thing I'm going to look for is a bowl. See if it will, there you go, the rotation's worked now. And there's my bowl. I need to make my stick a little bit bigger. Super. I'm going to go and get some water. There's my water dropper. I'll just change that to blue. Copy and paste is my friend again. Copy, paste, paste, super. And then, oops, we don't want to write in it. There we go. One. And I'm going to group it all together and I've made myself a shower. And now I can make my recording. À 7h15, je me douche. Okay, so once I've created all of my recordings and I've done whatever it is that I want to do, um, <clears throat> were I at one to one school and I knew that the children had keynote, then I could just send them the keynote and they could just listen to it. Um, I'm not a one to one school, so therefore I'm going to export this actually as a movie. So back to the three dots in the top right hand corner, export as a movie. <coughs> um, I want my slide to be slide seven to slide, whoops, seven. Um, I don't want I don't want any delay in the moving from build and I can export it. I'm going to save my video. Then I'm going to come in here. There it is. I'll just turn this off. And so the children can play those um, those little videos back and they can listen to them and do whatever listening exercise you prepare for them with that. So you could maybe do um, a, a true false thing. You could maybe do a listen and repeat, um, you know, those kind of things, or you could not give them um, any pictures at all, which is what we're going to go on to next. So you could produce no, no, um, no images, no stimulus whatsoever. Um, and you could just record and send the recording out. What I do suggest, so if you're going to do that, that you, you put question one, question two, um, and I'll show you why. Um, I'll put the recording in. Je m'appelle Rachel. J'habite sur l'île de Mans. Not like that, okay. And when I export that as a little movie, um, slide, oops. So we're going from this time we're going from slide eight to slide nine. Um, I'm going to export it. So I'm going to find my movie here and, and imagine this is mine and I'm, I'm playing it at home. Just turn the sound on. Je m'appelle Rachel. And it shows me where the next question is so that I can easily pause, listen, rewind, and the kids don't get lost in just a massive blank screen. Um, so that's my top tip because I learned that during um, the, the whole lockdown thing. And um, one of the things that I think is really cool in Keynote is being able to make templates. Again, this is really only useful if you know that everybody's got an, <clears throat> an iPad back at home. Um, you can see here that actually I've, I've um, copied and pasted the slides. So I haven't made more work for myself. I've just used the same slide in a different way. Um, <clears throat> so this is students doing their own recording, their own audio. Um, and I've just made a little box and a little text saying, add your recording here. You would send that to the students and they would, they would record je me lève à cette heure or whatever it is and they would pop it in the little boxes and it just gives them a little uh, sort of point of reference as to where to put the recording and they just send that back to you and you can mark it <coughs> right this one is another template that works quite well so this is um they listen and respond so they have to listen to you and then they have to respond so i've written bonjour comment tu t'appelles and i would record myself so Bonjour, comment tu t'appelles? 
I'm just going to pop that there. And then I'm going to go again. Do I beat two? Okay, so yellow is me and I've recorded myself. You'll send that to the students, the students listen to it. They write their response in the pink speech bubble and they record themselves saying their response. So it's not really a conversation, but it's probably as close as you're gonna to get um, to a conversation um, whilst you're not in the same classroom as the kids. It, it does get them listening and having to respond to a question. And of course you could just have them listen and not have any speech, that, any text there. Um, it could just be a, a back and forth in that way. Okay, this is one of my favorite lessons, my favorite things to do in class. I'm just going to, um, delete this if I can. Lovely. So I've put my text, Aujourd'hui je porte un t-shirt bleu et un jean noir. I would record that for my kids. So I'm going to press record audio. Aujourd'hui je porte un t-shirt bleu et un jean noir. So pop that in. Um, you send it off to the students. Again, only really suitable if you're one-to-one. -one. And you're going to press add. So this is what the kids would do. They would listen to you. They would go to their drawing and in the drawing tool, sorry, I don't, I don't think we've talked about drawing and I haven't shown you how to get there. So you go to add into this multimedia menu and then down to the bottom where it says drawing. And then this menu pops up at the bottom, which has got lots of different tools in. So you've got a pen, a pencil, a crayon, a fill tool, an eraser and um, a lasso tool. When you tap on each element, you can change the thickness of your pen and the little circle at the end means you can pick a color. Okay, so they've listened to me. I am wearing a blue t-shirt, right? So I need blue. So you get in a treat tonight, everyone. My amazing drawing skills. Um, now, as long as all the lines match up, so there's no little gaps, you've got to make sure everything matches up. You can go to the fill tool and you can fill. And then the other thing I was wearing was black jeans. Um, now, can you see here, it's not matching up and so it won't fill for me. So I have to make sure it matches. Let's see if that works. Hey, cool. Okay, we're done. And they just draw the picture to show you that they've understood um, what's going on, what, what, what you've said. Um, and that works really well in a classroom as well. Um, listen and draw and we do, and I do it a lot in my classroom on an iPad. Uh, the kids think it's a huge amounts of fun. Lovely, right. <clears throat> We're gonna have a little go now at some line drawing animation. Um, now, line drawer is an animation that's already built into Keynote pages and numbers. Um, and it's really cool thing to be able to do with your students. I am going to show you how to do it. Um, I'm just gonna go onto this blank slide. Now, I'm going to draw a picture of myself there's a caveat my ipad is upright so and i'm not the best drawers anyway so first of all i'm going to go to add i'm going to go to photo or video and i am going to pick a picture of me okay lovely right there i am in all my glory i actually only really want the head of me so what i'm going to do oops is i'm going to double tap on the picture and can you see how it's got dotted lines around it now and so that means I can crop myself like so. I can press done. Good, so we only want the head. And now I'm going to reduce the opacity on my photo. So I go to paintbrush, I go into style, and I'm just going to reduce that opacity so I can just about see myself. Right, I need to make myself a little bit bigger or else I'll never manage this. <clears throat> so press add again into this multimedia menu into drawing. Now I'm using an Apple Pencil, but you don't have to. You can use your finger, which a lot of my students do, or those really super cheap um, styluses with the rubber ends. They work fine for a classroom. I've had a pack of those, which I got off eBay, I think, super cheap, um, and they work no problem. Right, here we go. <clears throat> um, I'm going to choose this. 
and I am going to draw an outline of my hair. Easier said than done when you have hair like mine. But nonetheless, for you, it's lovely. And then I'm just going to fill it. Oh, I know, glamorous, right? Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, I don't want it to be that. I want a pen. I'm just going to choose a lighter colour and maybe give the impression that I do actually have some curls. Lovely. Let me change the colour again to this nice skin colour down here. And I'm going to try, it's a bit tricky. Can I just say I never recommend doing this live ever, but and there we are. Okay, so we've got to this point, um, but obviously now I can't see my facial features. So I'm just going to press done. And then I'm going to go to the um, paintbrush. And can you see this arrange tool? And I'm going to move the bit that I've already done to the back so I can photo to the front so I can see my eyes and stuff. And then I'm going to go back into that drawing menu and I'm going to there we go, try and make myself look a little more human. Uh, and All these fiddly bits take some time. Right, okay. Bear with me. This isn't going to be the best, but you'll get the right idea. Lovely. Okay. So imagine I'm done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the picture that's behind and I'm going to delete it. Oh, it's like the perfect depiction of me. Um, now, with this all done, I'm going to press animate and build in and I'm going to choose line draw and you will see that the um, iPad draws it for me. That's kind of cool, right? Okay, lovely. But we're not done just yet. I'm going to make that a bit smaller and move it off to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into drawing. I'm actually going to take the crayon. I'll do that size and I'm going to write Je m'appelle Arashan. Oh, now, can you see that the two pictures have like tried to join them together? They've joined together. They're like in one big box. And actually, I don't want that. I need them to be separate. And um, so if that happens to you, if you go to add and then drawing, and then you pick up this lasso tool, if you lasso this, you can uh, separate it and it gives you a separate box. So that's always super handy. And we're going to actually uh, line draw this as well. So we're going to go to animate, build in, line draw. Lovely. Okay. And the final thing we're going to do is going to add ourselves some audio. Where they're super interactive. Bonjour, je m'appelle Rachel. We're going to insert it. Now, if I save that now, what will happen is the picture will draw, the words will come up, and then it will say something. And, and that it is a bit naff when you say it as a, as a, as a movie. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter what element you tap on. So tap on one of the elements and go to animate. And then in the top right hand corner, the, next to done, there's like dots and lines. So if you press on that, you can start to um, deal with the build order. So I want my drawing to come up. Then I want my words to come up, but I actually want my audio to be with my words. So I'm going to tap on my audio and at the bottom, <clears throat> you should be able to see with build two. So if I tap with build, build two, now when the, the words um, animate, you'll hear my voice. So let's give it a go. Um, let's play it. Oh, sorry, I didn't make it. Bonjour, je m'appelle Rachel. 
there we go um, and i actually had to tap it to move it onto the next animation but if you export it as a movie we're on slide 14 so i'm going to export that uh, Rachel, before you do that, can you just show the timings, how you can change the timings of the animation? So, I can, is, certainly, yeah. Is that all right? Because I think that's a really useful uh, yeah, feature. So, so if, um, if, for example, the writing's super slow, you can actually speed up the animation. So you tap on the element that you want to speed up, you go to animate, you tap um, at the bottom where it says line, draw, build in, and then you get this thick wee thing that says, um, duration so the moment is taking four seconds to write my name but we can make it do it quicker so um let's look at the preview Bonjour, je m'appelle. okay so it goes quicker and and the, actually the speech is slower or we can make it much slower this will be super slow here we go Bonjour, je m'appelle Rachel. When I did this, my students, they tried to make the writing and the speech work together, but that's, um, that's quite tricky to do. Right, so we're going to press Thank done. You. No worries. Um, and we're going to export it as a movie. If it's going to play. Oops. Export as a movie. iPad says no. It will export as a movie. I might just close down my keynote, sorry. start it again it's been busy today i've been at work hmm. have i lost it oh i might have lost it everybody oh that's a shame not to worry um so you can export it as a key as um as a, a movie and it will just then play i think i might have my old example no i don't um and it will just play out for you and um, one thing after the other and you won't need to tap it um, but you can have a little play with that okie doke right the next thing we're going to have a look at is we're going to have a look at speaking postcards or storytelling. Um, so for this one, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to get myself a picture. Um, and I am going to oops, pop my iPad into split screen. Like so. So you can have two apps, actually you can have three apps open. Um, but you can split screen your iPad. Um, and this, the site I'm going to use is called Unsplash, which is a fab little website where you can get um, free photos. Um, and I'm going to search for Paris. And this one, this top one will probably do me. I'm going to press download. So we've got to say thanks to Chris Caridis for this photograph. And can you see at the top of the screen where the little down arrow is in a circle? It's just downloading for me. Um, it might take a little while. I do have a copy if it goes a bit slow. Come on, internet, you can do it. Slowly, slowly, it's going to go. Right, and when it's done, we're going to press up there. If it's downloaded it for me, let's just see it's going. There we go. I'm going to tap up there. We're going to tap the export button, which is the square with the arrow pointing up in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to save the image. Okay, so now we need to bring that image into Keynote. So we're going to go add photo or video, bring in my Paris picture. Okay, now Paris is a wee bit big. I'll just uh, uh, size it that way. I'll double tap on it and I'll crop it to the size of my slide, like so. Say done. I'll go back into my um, paintbrush. And if I tap arrange, I'll lock it to the back so it doesn't move when we put other elements on top. So I'm going to do is I'm going to bring myself back in. So that picture of me, there we go. 
So I want to use this picture of me and I want to pretend that I was in Paris and I'm going to use it as some kind of storytelling stimulus. Um, unfortunately, I have a background and it doesn't really make me look that great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called Instant Alpha to get rid of the background. So with the blue dots around the square of my photo, I'm going to press the paintbrush and go to the style. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to Instant Alpha. And I'm going to drag my finger across the photo and it should pick up one colour at a time. Now, because white is quite prominent, it will pick up white first. So I'll drag my finger. Can you see it's gone turquoise? When I let go, all of that will disappear. Ta-da! Um, and it's done. So I made myself transparent. Like that. That's really cool, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more to my picture. I am going to go to style. I'm going to pop a border on me. My border's a bit thin, so I'm going to go to width and I'm going to make my border a bit bigger. And then I'm going to go to arrange and I'm going to lock me in place. I'm going to go back up to our shape tool. Oops, I want to go to basic because I want a speech bubble. Like this. When I double tap in the speech bubble, I can obviously, um, I can obviously type. Yeah, we are. There we go. And of course, I can record myself. Je vais à Paris. There we go. And once again, I can export that as a movie. My slide is slide 16. Like that. And I can export it. And it'll save the video. And then, of course, when I go to my camera roll, there it is. Paris. Let's try again. Je vais à Paris. Okay. Um, so that's a nice way of making, um, I suppose, listening exercises stimulus. You don't actually have to have the audio on. Um, students can make speaking postcards um, or you can make stories up like that. And, and once they get into the rhythm of how to um, take off the background and put a speech bubble in and so on and so forth, it works really well. Lovely. OK. Yeah, you thought we were finished with Keynote. No, we're not. Right. We're going to play Treasure Hunt. Treasure Hunt's worked really well for my younger students during um, lockdown. Um, I did it in different ways because I couldn't do it in Keynote, but Keynote's got a really super cool way that you can make a treasure hunt. So what you need to do is you need to set up your slide so it looks something like this. You need a table of, of sorts and um, the students are going to find these elements that I, I've put there, okay? Um, and you might think, oh that's right, fine, lovely, they'll take a photograph and they'll stick it in there, great. But there's a really cool way in, in Keynote where you can actually put something called a placeholder which makes life so much easier for your students. And I am going to show you how to do it. So what we're going to do, I have already made using the icons. I'm just going to do that. So using the icons, I've already made this picture. So there is a camera icon and I've put the little words, add your photo here. It's a little bit big. So we'll, we'll crop it. Now remember you just double tap and you can crop. Right, so that's my thing. I'm just going to drop that. Oops. Just gonna drop that into my box like that. Hopefully everybody can see. Now, with the blue dots around, I'm going to go to the paintbrush and I'm going to go to image. Now, at the bottom there, can you see it says set as placeholder? So when I press set as placeholder, you'll see that my um, camera image that's in the table now gets a little plus sign next to it, okay? And you do that for each of the blocks. And what this means is that when the kids tap on the plus, and you see on the left-hand side, it opens up my, um, my photos, or I can just take a photo or a video and I'll put it in. So I'll just do that now for you. Let me turn myself around. Use a photo, that's a great photo, Rachel. 
okay and it instantly pops it into the treasure hunt um, and so it makes life so much easier and if you're in primary um, this is a boon like you can put placeholders on all sorts of things so you can make um, uh, postcards and you can have a placeholder where you want them to put the picture of Paris and so on and so forth so and um, a screen uh, a placeholder is is, uh, is brilliant and they're dead easy to make right treasure hunts move on um, the next thing we were just talking about templates actually and reducing cognitive load because obviously this massively reduces cognitive load for kids who don't have to think about how the picture is going to get in there it just gets in there by uh, you know dint of some kind of magic um, and making um, manipulatives I call them um, is really really good for a lot of younger kids so uh, you'll see here I've put some true and falses um, and all the kids have to do is they have to move the so Madame Smith habites à Londres. No, she does not. Madame Smith aime faire du kayak. Oui, c'est ça. Madame Smith déteste les escargots. Voilà, okay. Good. Um, and they pop them there. And what I've done is I've made a link between this slide and the next slide. So when, I need to put this in play mode. When you press, were you correct? It takes them to the answer slide so when you're not with them you can pop these answer slides in at the bottom of your keynote they generally don't realize that they are they're there and they can press were you correct and it'll take them to the answer slide and they can self-mark on your original slide you can ask them to pop the score in my score was three and they've marked it for you now of course there's an element of trust yes um but it is a really nice way of get for them to get really instant feedback on an activity when they're not with you because obviously you'll probably mark stuff in class but that's one way of going about it um, and that's my answer slide and the way to do that is you tap on the element that you want to um link it has to have text in it you can't link an image and um, well you can link an image as long as you make the text the same color as the image so you can do it, but it has to have, te it has to have text and you go to link. Um, mine links to the next slide, or you could choose it to link to another slide. Okay, the first slide, the last slide, link to a slide in the slideshow. You can get it to link to an external thing. So you could get it to link to a YouTube description of maybe some um, uh, grammar or something like that. Um, so linking is really useful. Lovely, there we go, linking, right. We're sort of done with keynote, but not totally. The next thing then. The next thing we're going to have a look at is we are going to have a look at using the camera. Um, so, here we go. The camera is super, super, uh, it's like a really super tool to use um, for uh, modern language learning. You can, of course, spin the camera around and just talk into it so you can do some speaking. That's really distracting, isn't it? <laughs> um, you can um, lay it flat on the ground. So if they lay the iPad on, on the table, then actually it just blanks the whole thing out. So if I just do that for you, it just goes black and they can still record a video, but it's just their voice. Okay. Um, and some kids actually find that easier than trying to find an audio app that works. Um, they can obviously take pictures pictures of their work and hand them in um, but one of the things that we're going to have a look at is we're going to use a picture and we're going to mark it up so I'm just going to come out of there I'm just going to go into my photos somewhere yes um, I've got a I've got a where's Wally who is Charlie I think he's Charlie en français somebody will correct me if that's wrong Joe am I right Yes, you are right. And I remember having an Uwe Charlie book in my classroom back in the day. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, isn't he? Yeah, okay. So um, we're going to mark this up. Can you see on the top right hand corner, it says done. And then to the left of it, it's like a, a wee circle with three dots in it. I'm going to tap on that. And then we're going to tap on mark up. Okay. And it brings up some tools at the bottom. They're very similar to the tools that are in the drawing applications that are in keynotes. And it's the same idea. So if you tap on it, you can make it fatter, thinner, and you can change the opacity. So you, in this case, you get um, pen, highlighter. Um, I think that's a pencil, but it looks like a. I think it's a pencil. Um, an eraser, uh, a ruler, which we don't want on. Um, some colours, 
and some other things which I'll go into in a minute. Um, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is first of all we're going to add some text. So I'm going to tap on the add button and I'm going to go to text. I'm just going to move it so you can actually see it. And you might have asked for them to look for, I don't know, three boats, so trois, two, like that. Um, and you can add some little arrows, like so, to point to some of your boats. There we are. So we're in the photos app at the moment, Rachel, is that right? Are you using markup? Yeah, yeah, we're in photos. Yeah, we're not in camera. No worries. Yeah, we're in photos. Thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we can maybe even draw. So we can uh, do this and we can say trois poissons, like so. We can draw a little arrow. And if we go back into add, we can use this super cool magnifier and we can go, oh, voila. Now you can make this bigger or smaller and you can magnify it or unmagnify it with the green one. So the blue button makes it massive and the green button increases the magnification. And then of course we can say, shall we? Like that. Okay, um, so that's quite fun if you want to give your um, students a picture and ask them some questions about it and then they can go into markup and they can mark up the, quick, the picture having found the things that you want them to find. So it works really well for spot the difference, it works really well for, for this kind of thing. Um, you can mark up pretty much anything. I do an activity um, really early on in the year with counting and I make the kids count out um, uh, uh, chess and um, conkers um, they count them out and then they have to take a photograph of it and mark it up with the how many uh, marron they have and so on and so forth so uh, marking up a photo is a good way of encouraging them to write text um, and then you can obviously put speech to it it depends what application you're using it with um, but markup is really really useful and actually at the end of the webinar I'll show you um, some other little bits to do with markup right we're done so that was a markup, everyone. Right, moving on. I'm sorry, it's getting quite late. So I'm going to try and be quick, quickish. You're doing absolutely fine. It's great stuff, Rachel. So don't rush. It's fine. You can have another 20 minutes, whatever you want. It's fine. Okay, brilliant. Um, we are now in numbers and people think numbers is all about, um, I don't know, adding things up. <laughs> um, uh, but numbers in I work is actually much more flexible than maybe Excel is, let's say. Um, so I know this may seem super obvious, but you can obviously just use a table and make yourself a, a sentence builder and you can colour code the top so that when you're talking to the students, right, let's look at the red column, let's look at the yellow column and so on and so forth. We're just going to park that for a minute. Um, so remember, in numbers, we've got a sentence builder. Um, this, I'm just going to delete some of this because I was practising earlier. Bear with me. Um, Joe and I have spent most of the day trying to get my iPad to work. So we've practiced a number of things. Right, this is um, numbers and it gives, you can give your students a really super simple vocabulary test. You'll see that I've given them a black square. That's gonna be useful later. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called conditional highlighting. Now conditional highlighting exists in all, um, spreadsheets so I've used this in, in uh, Google Sheets as well because this doesn't work because we're not one-to-one -one. so it, this does work in Google Sheets um, although Joe I forgot to check whether it works on the um, iPad app you know we were talking about that earlier I did forget to check that so what you're going to do is the word is impact you want them to spell it so highlight the square go to the paintbrush and at the bottom, it'll say add conditional highlighting. OK, you've got some options. You've got numbers, text, dates, durations. You want to go into text. So we're making a rule now. So text is, and we want the text to be, um, my top tip is to make the first letter capital because the iPad naturally capitalizes the first letter of everything. And so kids can think they're getting things wrong when actually they're getting things right. So unpack, so if the text is unpack, we're gonna fill it green, okay? 
do another one paintbrush add conditional highlighting text if the text is comping the text will be green and so when the kids come you give this out to your students they do look they take their black box they cover it up they tap in here they type and park oops with a space they press return and it goes green and they know that they've got it right look cover right that's not gonna be right is it And so that's really useful. And I use that quite a few times um, during the lockdown crisis so the kids could get instant feedback on whether they were doing um, their spellings correctly. Um, and I know there are lots of apps out there. There's Quizlet and all sorts of things, but this is dead simple to set up and it's super simple for kids to get their heads around. If you're a primary school teacher, there's a, another nice way that you can uh, use numbers for spelling tests. So in here, I've got three pictures. Um, and what we're gonna do I just try and get rid of that one second. Mm. Have you ever tried to export the um, sheet, or sorry, numbers into um, Excel? And, and if you have done that, do you know if the formatting works in the same way or with the images, for example? I have. The images don't work very well. Um, yeah, I have. I, I, I'll, like a census builder, I will export as PDF and share. So that's quite good. Um, if it's got, if it's just text, then that shares quite well, but the pictures don't share very well, unfortunately. Okay. That's great because we've, we've got some comments in the chat about can you export this to Excel? Uh, like, likewise with Keynote, can you export to PowerPoint? So uh, thanks for clarifying that. Keynote will, ex Keynote will export to PowerPoint, but you don't necessarily get all your um, animations with it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to grab all of these. I'm going to go to paintbrush and I'm going to go into format and I'm going to pick pop up a menu. Okay. And so when you tap here, you've now got a pop up menu. All right. So, um, we can still add conditional highlighting here. So we can go to cell add conditional highlighting text is, um, green. Pom, green. Oops, text is un banana. Okay, right, cool, it's there. And so what the kids do is they tap here and they select now the right picture. I don't actually know whether I've got a conditional highlighting on there. Um, so it makes it easier if you've got younger children. So if I make them all wrong, they tap, oops. It is un pom, tap, it's a banana, and it tells them whether they're right. So that's really nice. But again, um, pop-up menu, as, as far as I'm aware, only exists in numbers. Uh, the final thing in numbers is that actually you can make, um, it's a blank canvas. So you can just delete the table and then you have a blank page upon which you can do whatever you like. The things that I like to do in um, numbers, are, I'm just gonna change the color of this. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste it a couple of times. Um, you can make really lovely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a bit late now. You can make lovely um, uh, mind maps in here. So what you do is, is you go to add, and can you see this linky line? You tap the linky line and you get the, you, the blue links up to the boxes. And then as they move the boxes around, they, they can arrange the, so that's one way that I use um, a blank canvas. The other way is obviously I just use a drawing tool, which is in the same place in numbers as it is in Keynote, which is dead handy. And, you know, we can just draw things. Um, so uh, a blank canvas is, uh, is worth thinking about if you're um, a one-to-one -one school or you've got a cart of iPads and you're in the classroom and you can just use it as your whiteboards. Right, okay. <clears throat> The next thing we're going to have a look at, um, and it's going to be reasonably quickly, is we're going to have a look at clips. Uh, just need to bear with me for a second. So clips is um, was actually designed as um, an iPad app, you know, an iPhone app, and so you have to have your um, 
iPad in portrait mode, um, like I have here. And you can make really quick movies that you can share with your students. Um, and also it supports um, language text, which I'm just going to show you. So um, I'll give you an example. This one. I'll just play it. L'année dernière, je suis allée en France. Je suis allée à Paris, où j'ai visité la Tour Eiffel. Aussi, je suis allée au musée d'Orsay, parce que j'aime la peinture. Chaque jour, dans l'après-midi, j'ai bu un café. OK, so we're going to try and build that dead quickly now. Um, so, I'm going to go into the top left-hand corner and I'm going to press Create New. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a poster, right? So I'm going to choose this poster here. Oh, I'm just going to go back to posters for a second. There are millions of posters, like there are so many, it's ridiculous. You can edit them all apart from the Star Wars ones, the Mickey Mouse ones and the Pixar ones. OK, so um, we're going to go with this one. I'm going to change my thing into French. Okay, now I'm not going to speak on this one. Um, I'm just going to record. So at the moment, this isn't recorded. And you can tell because underneath the red bar at the bottom, there are no little boxes. So if there are no little boxes there, you've not recorded a movie. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to record the movie. So I'm just going to press this red bar. There are two ways to record, and I'm just going to show you one of them now. So I'm just going to press this red bar. So just let the animation unfold. If I tap on there, you'll see that it, at the box at the bottom means it's recorded. I've tapped on the box. It's got a white border around it. And these are some edit tools in there. We're not going to look at all of them, but can you see that it's got mute muted? Um, and if it hadn't had mute muted, like if it was like that, you would, if you listened, you'd hear me breathing. Um, so we just mute things that we, we don't want to hear speaking on. When we're done with the edit tool, we can just press done in the top left hand corner. Okay, so I went to Paris. We'll use my Paris picture again. And this time we're going to record ourselves speaking, but we want those lovely icon, those lovely words to come at the bottom of the subtitles. So if you can see next to the red bar, there's like a white speech bubble. If we tap on there, you'll see that I get lots and lots of options for um, subtitles. I'm going to take this one. And <clears throat> This time when I record, I'm just going to push the red button up and it's just going to record as I speak and I'll tap it to stop it. OK, and this is really useful if you're speaking and it's really useful for the kids as well. They don't have to concentrate on two things. So here we go. Je suis allé à Paris. Now, you will see when I play this. Je suis allé à Paris. That um, it, it's not quite grammatically correct we need to edit those subtitles so i'm gonna i tap in the little box at the bottom with the picture of the eiffel tower on it's got a white board around my editing tools come up i go into live titles and can you see <clears throat> that the text is there if i just tap in that box um i can edit this text now top tip if you use two fingers on your um ipad keyboard it becomes a little scrolly thing what's the word i'm looking for joe there we go ali cursor thank you <laughs> like that um now this catches me out every time when you want to come out of edit text you have to press the return button it's highlighted in blue to remind you i never remember press return okay now uh, get rid of the text press done there we go je suis allé à paris there we are OK, um, so let's just add one more. And we, I had a cup of coffee, so here we go. Now, if you press the little star button next to the right of the bar, you could get some lovely filters. So that's normal, cartoony ones. The one I particularly like for this is a little watercolour. I'm going to go with that. So I'll just record this last slide. J'ai bu du café. Let's see if it recorded. I don't know if it did. J'ai bu du café. Okay, and can you see it's not, um, it's not worked. So we'll just go and edit. Oops, sorry. Just going to edit that. 
No, see it every time I forget. Okay, um, so that's maybe that's our film done, let's just say. Um, I would recommend if you're doing it in class, you tell them how many slides you're expecting them to do, because they'll try and get away with like nothing. So six, eight slides is, is doable. In the top right hand corner, you'll see that there's this, um, a music thing, a musical note, press on the musical note, we can go to soundtracks. And there are lots and lots of soundtracks. Now the soundtracks are brilliant. They crop them to the right um, uh, distance, so that it'll stop when, when the film stops and also it'll duck the sound so when you're speaking over the top of it the music isn't too loud right i'm going to find my favorite if i can remember what it's called okay my favorite is cool cat okay. um, and can you see that it's added it's at the bottom of my thing so if i just play this Je suis allée à Paris. J'ai bu du café. Okay, we press done. And then we press the export button, which is the square with the arrow in the bottom right hand corner. And we save the video. And it goes straight into my camera roll and then I can do whatever I want with that. Um, just one more example whilst we're in, um, thank you. Just one more example whilst we're in here. I know we're running short of time. Um, <clears throat> But this works rather well too. So um, I'll just play it for you so you can see. So if you look in this example, j'ai joué au tennis, you'll see that j'ai is a part of the auxiliary verb avoir. And jouer is the past participle of the regular ER verb jouer to play. So you can use it to teach grammar. Um, and you just, if I just quickly build this for you, um, I just chose a really super simple slide up here. Um, and just record, remember to record as you go. Okay, I'm going to use another poster at the moment. I'm just going to use a black one. Let's try that again. Okay, oh, we need to get rid of the ellipsis at the end. Like that, okay. Um, and now we're gonna add a little bit more text. So we're gonna press on that star again. So this time we're gonna go into text. And the word we wanted was auxiliary, which I always spell wrong, auxiliary verb. You've got to type it first, but once you've typed it, you can then actually resize it and move it. And then we're going to go into stickers. Um, I'm going to go with, where is it? Oh, we'll go with this one. Oops. Mm. Ooh, hello, two of them. I'm going to go like that. And I want some Mickey Mouse shapes. Can you see the bottom? You can see the little little mouse with the ears. I tap that. There's some really cool Mickey Mouse shapes. I like the Mickey Mouse pointy finger. Rotate it. Okay. As you can see, the J is a part of the auxiliary verb avoir. And you can go on and you can build using those kind of stickers and pointers and you can describe how um, uh, you would form the perfect tense, for example. Um, and again, you can share it, you can put music on it. Sometimes I don't put music on it because I think the students find it distracting, um, but obviously that's, that's completely up to you. One very last thing which is, which is quite amusing is you can make an emojis of yourself if you have one of the newer iPads. Go. Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the past tense. Now we've studied this before and so and during the crisis, during the lockdown period on the island, I used this quite a lot to just introduce um, topics to the students so they felt like they were seeing me. But sometimes I had really bad hair, so I just did my animoji. Um, and I'll show you how to do it very quickly. So I'll just create a new one. I'll go into stickers and you'll see there's animojis. I have to hold this quite a long way away. So that's me. I quite like myself as a, I like my frown as an octopus. Um, 
Um, and you can have a lot of fun with that and the kids absolutely love it. So if you've got a tutor group um, and you do an early morning message for them, then that's a fun way to go about doing that. Right, I'm nearly done. Super. The one last thing I want to talk to you about is screen record. Screen record can be found in the um, control center. You get to the control center by pulling down from the right hand corner of your iPad, like so. Screen record won't work because I'm using Zoom, but you can see that it's like grayed out, it's underneath the, the clock um, at the bottom. If you don't see it when you um, open your iPad, you'll need to set it up. And the way you set it up is you go into settings and you go to control center, customize control, and you can see that you can add and delete certain things. You'll see the screen record is added, so it's in the include thing, but that's how you set it up. Um, so what? in order to show you how... Sorry, what, sorry, sorry, while you're in settings, um, Rachel, could you just show people how to add a different language keyboard as well? Would that be okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Did we not know how to do that? Right, okay. Um, well, I was just thinking maybe people don't know how to do that. So if that's okay in settings. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, uh, you can, and actually that's just reminding me something about clips because I didn't show you how to add, change the language in clips and I'll just go back and do that for you as well. So um, when you're in settings, you go to general and then keyboard. And at the top, it says keyboards, and you can add um, a, a new keyboard, and it brings up all the languages, and you just choose the one you want. And there's millions of them, um, and you just pick it. And when you're working, so let me just get a blank slide. Um, I'll just pop some text in. So on the keyboard, actually, if I just lift it off. So you can see my keyboard. So can you see the world key at the bottom left hand corner? When you tap and hold that, you'll see all your keyboard settings. At the moment, I am writing in English. But if I just tap once, it'll go into the last keyboard, last other keyboard that I use. So, um, and I tap again and it'll take me back into English. So it knows that I keep swapping between the two. So all you have to do is tap once and it switches between the two keyboards. But if I suddenly wanted to go into German, I would have to tell it I'd have to hold my finger down. Um, just going back to clips for a second, because I didn't show you how to do this. Um, let's pop a new one in. Uh, bear with me. Um, when you do live titles, so we remember we did that, we tapped the little box. Again, can you see just underneath the bike, there's like a world key. If you tap that world thing, then that's where you select all the languages um, in clips. So it's not always in French, obviously you can have it in Spanish, German, whatever you want. Um, and I forgot to show you that. So that was a timely reminder, Joe. Timely That's all right. J just as we're there, could you go back and just show voice dictation in a different language in the, um, was it a uh, keynote you were just in? Is that possible as well? Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Um, let's just pop a text box in. Yes, I can. So I'll just lift this off my actual keyboard. And hopefully the keyboard will come up. Hello. Right. Can you see on my keyboard that there is a wee microphone next to the space bar? If I press my keyboard and I make it French, what... Did I do that? Yeah. Uh, when I press the microphone and I speak, it will type in French for me, in theory. Okay, here we go. Bonjour. Mm. Bonjour, je m'appelle Rachel. Aha, look, it worked. Um, there you go. And so you can change your, you have to change your keyboard setting because you need to know what language it's trying to figure out. And then you can dictate into your, um, into your iPad and it'll, it'll use the right language. Right, Thank here we you. go. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad it worked, that's all I can say. <laughs> okay, and um, we were talking about markup before. And um, one of the things that you can do is, because I think kids when they're not with you, they feel like they're a bit lost. So you can, um, Use markup and screen record to mark something live for them. You'll get the idea in a minute. I just have to play this. Right, okay, this is my daughter's work. Don't tell her I've done this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so I've 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's jumped twice. I didn't think it had picked up. Let's try again. Okay, so I've got screen record recording right now, and you can see that by the red button that's here in my control center. Um, I've uploaded a of actually my daughter's work um, as a, a photograph. I'm going to tap on the three button, three dots at the top here where it says done. And I'm going to go to mock up. I'm going to choose a red pen because hey, why not? Okay. And then I am just going to talk whilst I mock. So, je suis en bonne santé parce que je mange zen. Okay, well, B. That's a really good start to your um, to your paragraph here. Okay, next sentence. Par exemple, hier j'ai mangé cinq portions de fruits et légumes et j'ai bu de l'eau. Excellent use of the perfect tense here and there. Okay, so you get the basic idea, yeah. So you mark and you draw and it picks up your voice and it picks up your markings that you make on the photo you once it's finished you press you might see on the end of this one you press um there's like a little button at the top of the screen and you press that and it saves it to your camera roll and then you can share that however you want to share that with your students through google classroom or what have you like it's time consuming but maybe every once in a while it's well worth it okay um you can use screen record to um talk through grammar and um, i'll just explain it um, Okay, so I've got screen record on here, and then um, when you play your keynote in a, a full screen, if you tap on the screen, you get um, some little tools at the bottom. Uh, one's a highlighter, so you can talk over your keynote. Okay, the future tense. So this is what we're looking at today, guys. We've looked at it before. We're just going to do some revision on it. And if you remember, the future tense is the present tense you take a present a bit of the present tense of ali which means to go plus the infinitive which is um, as we know the verb in its purest form or, or the bit of the verb that you find in the dictionary so if we look at an example this bit here this is our pronoun this is our present tense of ali so il va he goes or he's going and this one here mange ending in er is our infinitive so you can just see now that there's a little red button just where it says 63 percent on my ipad and you tap that and it downloads it to your camera roll the final one which worked super well during lockdown was using remember i said that sentence builder and was using a sentence builder um, and screen records to produce a listening task for the students i'll let myself explain Okay, as you can see, I am in screen record again. We're just in the control center here. Um, and I've got open numbers. And um, in numbers, what you've got um, is you have, if you press on add, and you go into this multimedia menu, you have a join tool. Okay, so what I would do is I would send the uh, sentence builder out to my students. Uh, via Google Classroom actually because that's what we use um, and then I would make a listening using um, screen record and the join tool um, and it would go a bit like this so I've got my my, um, my sentence builder and I would say in French um, a sentence and I would ask expert kids to either write it down in their book or if they had an iPad they could circle it just like I'm about to do so um, for example, en ville il y a un camping, je pense que c'est en ville. En ville il y a un camping, je pense que c'est en ville. Um, and you can select the colours here. You can select your different pen thicknesses by tapping on a pen. If you've got a crayon, a pencil, and a felt dip, I'm going to use a crayon. So I think I said en ville il y a un camping, je pense que c'est en ville. And then I would, I would do exactly that and show the students the answer. Um, and then I would go on to the next one and so on and so forth. Also, you can do it the way around. So I'd say, in town, we have uh, a beach. In my opinion, it's cool. So in town, we have a beach. In my opinion, it's cool. So the answer, en ville, on a une plage. 
à mon avis, c'est full. Um, that listen task which really, really well locked down um, because they get very quick feedback on how they're doing. They can pause you, they can write down the sentence, they can circle it just like I'm doing, and they can go back and do it as many times as they like. Cool. And um, we made it. It was quite a long one. Um, if you have any questions or you need any help, you can get hold of me on Twitter at, at Lanks Last Rach. Um, and I'll happily answer your iPad questions and queries. I'll try to anyway. I'll probably know somebody who knows the answer if I don't know the answer. So thanks so much for sticking with me for a long time, actually. Um, and hopefully you've all managed to get um, something out of it that you might be able to take back to your classrooms and it'll help you with blended learning or maybe just whilst you're in the classroom with all your kids and a bunch of iPads. That was so amazing, Rachel. Thank you so much. Um, what I particularly liked about it is the way that we, you were saying that, you know, you don't have to be a one to one school, that you're not a one to one school yourself in, in, in your own context. But all those ideas could be used. Um, it could be used just with the, with the one iPad or it can be used in a, in, in a, a mixed device uh, situation, which I think is absolutely fa fabulous. So thank you ever so much for sharing all your ideas. Um, and it was particularly interesting to see how you're using numbers, which is not normally, in my uh, experience, something which is associated necessarily with languages. So to see how you're using numbers creatively has been absolutely fascinating. So thank you. Um, I think I answered all the questions in the chat. I think I'm right in saying that. So with that, with that in mind, if people want to um, uh, open up their webcams and their microphones and just give Rachel a, a very much deserved round of applause. And if you do have any questions, we can... Uh, Put those to Rachel. Um, I know. Well, someone asked about can you have the voice dictation on the Mac, which I know you can, but you have to enable Siri, don't you? And then you have you to do. you, dub, you double tap the FN key bottom left, which will then bring it up. Um, which I discovered having um, resurrected my MacBook Pro from 2012, which is the uh, the the oldest device which will still <laughs> run Siri. I worked out, so I was very very relieved to see that. And uh, yeah, it works like a, like a dream. So things like emails or, or tweets, using that is really, really nice. Okay, anyone want to, yeah, anyone, anyone want to ask any questions or anyone at all? No one. No one at all? No, no one. Okay, I think I've obviously done far, far too good a job at asking everyone's question in the chat, but okay. So <laughs> without further ado, um, Thank you ever so much already. Yeah, we've had quite a few questions in the chat, but it's been, it's been great. Um, and yeah, let's, let's give Rachel a round of applause. Come on, turn on your microphones and let's give everyone a round of applause. Uh, give Rachel a round of applause, come on. Awesome. Excellent, fantastic. So thank you so much. Uh, that was really, really awesome. And um, yeah, yeah, I've just uh, seen a, a message from Helen about the live stream, it's okay, yeah. But um, no, we didn't turn on the, on the live stream, but we've had, I think, 34 people in the room tonight and they can always watch it on, on, uh, on the YouTube channel afterwards. So, uh, da, da, da. oh, right. So Sarah is asking if there's any, anything written down somewhere to recap. Um, what I normally do is I normally sort of search for these sorts of questions that, that, that come up and you'll find on the Apple website, uh, there's lots of you know guides and explanations on how to do all these different things. You just have to search search for it, and it'll be there. But obviously, Sarah can watch the the video back as well. Any other any other well, things I, you? I, know? I mean, what about what I'm, about all these wonderful books that you've made, Rachel? Do you want to give your books a plug? Oh, I've written a few books. Yes, yeah. so I've written um, a book on clips. It's probably a little bit dated now. I've written a book on sketch noting. I've written a book on. Um, oh, I did some quick tips for Keynote. I've done two books on that. And they're all in the Apple Store, Apple Bookstore, so you can search those. It's probably easy if you just search Rachel Smith and you'll see that they're um, ADE books. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're free to download. Uh, the other thing is if you've got questions, then and you can either tag me in a question on Twitter, but if you use the hashtag Apple Edgy Chat, then usually somebody... ADE-ish, APLS, will come back to you with an answer. Um, so, yeah. Um, awesome. And there's yeah, also the everyone can create books, aren't there, that the people can check out? Yeah, they're, they're coming as well. And all of that stuff is really transferable to, um, to language learning. Um, so everyone can create. Uh, there's music, video, picture, drawing, photos. And that's, I can't remember, I think that might be it for, but they're brilliant. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I think there's yeah. about t- 10 or 12. There's lots of them. They're, yeah, they're, they're fabulous. And then also people like Matt Pullen as well has done some really fantastic ebooks as well. So if you do a search for Matt Pullen, um, and his yeah, there's, lot, there's lots of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, his YouTube channel is brilliant as well. So there's loads of stuff out there, but I can point you in the right direction if there's, um, if you need it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. It's been really, really interesting. So I'm going to stop recording now and uh, we will then say our farewells. Thank you. Mm-hmm.